I want to bring in our CNN legal analyst, criminal defense attorney Danny Savallo, CNN legal analyst and former federal prosecutor Laura Coates, and CNN senior law enforcement analyst and former FBI assistant director Tom Fuentes. Danny, let me start with you. This case, as so many cases we have seen involving police shootings, seems to turn on whether the officer believed he was in imminent danger. It actually centers on two inquiries. First, what was the reason for approaching uh, Mr. Scott in the first place? And secondly, the decision to shoot. Those are separate and distinct inquiries. And critical here is the determination that once, if the police saw, number one, if they saw marijuana, and if they saw him exit the car with a firearm in his hand, remember, this is an open carry state, which creates a thorny issue. How do you decide someone who may be lawfully open carrying their weapon uh, is committing a crime or dangerous? It really is problematic. And the question is, if you're holding a firearm by your side, are you brandishing it such that it's dangerous? Or did the police have uh, reasonable suspicion to approach and initiate contact uh, with this victim? The second issue is whether or not the shooting part was justified. And if he was noncompliant and uh, making any sort of threatening moves, that's an easier analysis in favor of the police. But that initial reason to approach should really be scrutinized in this case. Laura Coates, want to bring you in on this. Uh, the DA, I mean, it, it was noteworthy to everyone sitting here, went into meticulous detail about the investigation and their finding. It's in what led the district attorney to reach this conclusion of no charges. From what you heard, did the DA convince you, Laura? I'm not convinced that we have all of the information that he had to make that decision because, frankly, a very big chunk of this, a missing piece here, is this idea of we all saw a video of Keith Lamont Scott also walking backwards at the time that he was shot, and that wasn't really discussed by the prosecutor. And what really kind of got under my crawl, if you, if you uh, lack a better term, was the fact that what he was relying on in part was this notion that somebody who has a weapon drawn at its side would be able to match or tie the speed time and reaction time of an officer responding to it. And that may be the case, but his focus was all, all the things that an officer did not know at the time. And they didn't know about the medical history, didn't know about the drug use, except for the marijuana perhaps, didn't know about his traumatic brain injury, and they saw a man with a gun down on his side walking backwards. Now there must be something more to it. But really, this case comes down to this, Kate. It was a compete, compete a competition between credibility. You had the community members who were shown in many parts to give one testimony in front of the media and one in front of the FBI. And you had officers who were already deemed to be credible. And you had more than one saying that there was a threat of lethal force by Keith Lamont Scott. And in that balancing act, officers almost always win. One of the discrepancies was, did did Keith Lamont Scott have a gun? Right. A lot of the witnesses right. said yeah. no. The wife said no. The evidence as laid out here in the witness testimony from the other police officers in radio traffic is yes. That yeah. is what the DA just said there. However, Tom Fuentes, the DA made clear that Keith Lamont Scott did not raise or point the gun. No witness testimony points to that. And the other piece of evidence, which is interesting, is none of the video, and there was a lot of video from dash cam to body cam to, to Keith Lamont Scott's own wife shooting video with her cell phone, none of the video actually shows a gun in his hand. Well, first of all, John, they not only show that he had a gun, they show that he had and prove that he had that gun with the evidence that it had been stolen uh, and the individual who uh, sold it to Scott, that that's how he obtained that gun. The idea that he would be wearing an ankle holster without that gun in the event that he might find a gun that fits that holster somewhere on the street is absurd. Uh, secondly, um, this whole notion that just because the gun's in his hand uh, and that he doesn't pose a threat. I was a police firearm instructor. I was an FBI firearm instructor, SWAT team member, SWAT commander. I can tell you that while Bill Hickok would have a difficult time winning that draw if the subject already has the gun in his hand because it would take less than a tenth of a second to raise it and let a bullet fly toward that police officer. And we can do this. We can go to a test lab and try this with the uh, toy guns if you want. But I'm telling you that the notion that he didn't raise the gun and therefore didn't pose a threat is absurd uh, from a police officer's standpoint. Secondly, 
he doesn't, the officer doesn't shoot him the second he gets out. As Danny mentioned, it is an open carry state. He gets out of the car. They don't know who he is yet. They don't know if he has a lawful right to possess a weapon. He gets out of the car with that gun in his hand. They don't shoot him at that point. And you can hear in his wife's video where he, the officers yell 10 times at him to drop that gun and he doesn't comply. And that indicates to them that they, each time they yell and he doesn't comply, the level of threat goes up because now you wonder what is he going to do? And it shouldn't be a guessing game. It shouldn't be a quick draw contest between the police and the subject. And no matter what's gonna happen here, you're not gonna have a situation where an officer under those circumstances doesn't defend himself and shoot the individual. We do know, I have, we have been reading leading up to this press conference that the, that the county, that the city has been put off, has put officers uh, on standby really because they are gonna be working and be ready to work in 12 hour shifts in the event that they need to prepare for any violence following when, when, the, when the DA made this announcement. That of course is top of mind. You could hear that in the DA's voice when he pleaded with the community saying that he hopes that the community now takes a collective pause and consider and digest this report. Big news coming out of Charlotte following this officer-involved shooting of Keith Lamont. Keith Lamont Scott, Danny, Laura, Tom, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.